So first I'd like to show you Electrify, which is a stylized effect in Universe. And we'll add some electricity to this downhill racer. Electrify uses a number of different ways to generate an electrical effect. By default, it's using the image contours of the source and it's cycling through the brighter areas of the image through the darker areas of the image. I can slow that down or stop that cycling altogether by turning the evolution speed to zero. And if I move the evolution offset forward, I can get it right to that point where I need it, right here, right on that racer. Now I have a lot of other areas occupying that same area of luminance as the racer. And I do have a very basic built-in mask section here where I can enable that and I could put the mask position and keyframe the mask position width and height to match. And this can actually work pretty well. Being that I'm here in After Effects, I can take advantage of the masking tools that After Effects has. And I've already set this up, but all I really need to do is draw a couple quick masks here just using the pen tool. And then I generally would use a Roto Bezier spline for something like that. Draw a quick shape around the body and then another around any separate limbs that we have that are kind of moving in different directions. And just use the tracker. And once you track this, you end up with a pretty reliable mask. And that's exactly what I did. I'll apply a little bit of feathering to this. So I'll set the feathering to 50 pixels. Now on this background layer, I'll remove Electrify and apply Electrify to that foreground layer that is masked. And now we've got a really nicely isolated Electrify version of our downhill racer. Now, as you can see, even though I turned that, that evolution speed down to zero, we still end up with a nice amount of cycling. And a lot of that's coming from the mat section right here. And that's simply a fractal noise generator that is applying a noise image to the transparency of the electrical image. So it adds a bit of shimmering. So I also have the ability to scroll it. So if I set this to kind of scroll in the direction of the motion of the action here, I'll get some nice shimmering that kind of follows in the direction of the, uh, the racer. Now I can actually mix together fractal noise and the image contours by using this selection right here, noise and image contours. And I think this works pretty well because you end up having a little bit of both. You have some basic fractal noise and you have the image contours working together. Now, I would definitely go into the fractal noise settings and have the scroll have a little bit of motion to it because otherwise if it's just kind of sitting uh, static, it's not going to look very good. So adding a little bit of that scroll to the fractal noise is going to help out quite a bit. This effect doesn't just work on footage. You can also use it on motion graphics here. I've got some basic text here and I've applied another universe effect called universe luster. And this creates a reflective glassy surface. So if I go in and apply universe electrify, I probably wouldn't use image contours for this, but just use fractal noise. And this is a good way to utilize that fractal noise setting where it's going to kind of just apply to the text area, but with a little bit of scroll in there and mostly the default settings, it can look like a pretty solid electrical effect. I'm going to change the colors to something a little warmer. Uh, let's say I want it to scroll left to right, so I'll go into the fractal noise settings and turn up the fractal noise scroll X. And I'll bump up the brightness just a little bit. Next, I'd like to talk about Analog from Universe 4, which simulates analog color, noise, distortion, and output. So I had this vision in my head of lots of TVs stacked in the uh, old fashioned storefront. Um, and then somehow I also had a vision of it being sort of cyberpunky. So we got this collection from Kitbash, the Kitbash uh, Cyber Streets collection. We got the materials converted to use in Redshift within Cinema 4D. 
and then we got it all rendered and here it is. I'll give you the quick, quick tour. And this is the final composite and I just have a little bit of looks uh, from Magic Bullet on the outside. Jumping in one level deeper, I've got my super comp composition. So this is handling the compositing of all of the TV. So adding a little bit of haze and glare and blending the edges. That's also handling the glow of the sign. Uh, jumping in one level even deeper, here are all the individual TV layers. So these are all individual After Effects layers. So these all have the analog effect applied on there and you can see that it's doing some color shifting and doing some CRT pixels and all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna grab that actual clip and create a new composition so we can just focus on the plugin itself. So the focus of analog is a number of different things. Like I said, it does a lot of color shifting to create a much more analog feel. So I'm not focusing so much on degrading the image. So we're not adding a huge amount of distortion and noise and all that kind of stuff. The first section here is really just focusing on color. Most of the color process here is taking the source RGB color space, shifting it to YUV, and just doing a number of clever things to the YUV color space to make it feel a lot more video-like. For example, this phase control isn't necessarily a color phase or a hue shift, but it's actually shifting everything into YUV and manipulating the U and V channels separately. It's emphasizing them in a number of different ways, including blurring uh, one side or the other side, depending on what side of the phase that we're on to emphasize that uh, phase kind of filter. Speaking of filters, there's something just called a generic filter, and this is just a a kind of overall video feel. And what it's doing is a custom mix of YUV replacement. And it's actually replacing the luminance channel with a custom mix of RGB that just feels a lot more video-like. So I'm not gonna go through all of these because we'll have a much more detailed uh, tutorial for you. But just keep in mind that there's a lot of really clever stuff that you can do with just a few sliders. For example, I'll take the saturation down to zero and I'll turn up something called image contrast, very high. Image contrast does a sort of ghosting around contrasting areas of the image. And if I perhaps turn up the black level a little bit to kind of elevate that uh, uh, baseline black level and maybe give a little bit more Luma contrast, we get that sort of 1960s uh, tube camera kind of look, like the black and white tube camera. But if we start pumping that saturation back up, in fact, we start to over crank it and maybe bring the black level down and lessen the image contrast, we get a little more cleaner of maybe an 80s television kind of look. Now, you don't have to use these scan lines. You don't have to make it look like a CRT, but that's just one of the looks. We have a number of different scan lines in here, horizontal, vertical. There's even PC CRT dots. Um, or you can simply set it to none. Lastly, just talking quickly about the transformations here. This plugin is actually the first time we've started moving our plugins into a new 3D render engine. So as I turn this curvature up or down, it's not sort of a bulging distortion effect. It's actually a 3D curvature. And as we move this 3D engine forward, you'll see a lot more integration with uh, After Effects 3D space and materials and all that kind of stuff. Lastly, I'd like to show you Texturize Motion. This is a collection of 14 different categories of texture, each with eight different variations in that category. By default, it will cycle through all of the different textures in the category, and it will use a playback speed specified right here in frames per second. It will also synchronize the footage to that playback speed if I check posterize source time. So right now I am playing back our textures at five frames per second, and I'm also posterizing the source footage to five frames per second. The result is a very stop motion kind of feel. Now to further enhance that stop motion feel, there's this section called jitter. Jitter will randomize different parameters on the image, such as rotation, scale position, as well as the brightness. So if I check things like animate rotation, animate scale, all of these values will randomize and flicker during the playback. 
In addition to that, we have a displacement map section that will use the texture as a displacement map. So different maps will have radically different looks. So if I set this to, let's say, a marker texture and turn this up, we get a very interesting distorted kind of look. In addition, we've added color separation, which will distort each red, green, and blue channel differently. So that's a quick overview of the new plugins coming in Universe. We'll have a lot more details and training coming on them very soon once they get launched.